Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to draw the new App Store icon from iOS 11 in Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump into it. You can see on screen I have a new artboard set up, a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high, and I've grabbed the new App Store icon as a JPEG ripped straight from the internet, and we're going to redraw this as a beautiful, shiny vector graphic. So let's just zoom in here, you can see those lovely pixels. Now the first thing we're going to do is select the rectangle tool and left click and start creating some shapes. Now of course I've got this image from the internet, so what we can do is actually draw over this. So we've got a rectangle there and then I can just drag this holding alt and it will create that copy. And you'll see those smart guides there nicely lining everything up and you can turn them on here. Now what I'm going to do is go to the transform panel and you can see the rotation icon here. Nope, that's not it, <laughs> this one here. That's the rotation icon and I can set that at 60 degrees and hit return. And then just move this down here. Go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, object, transform, reflect, and reflect that along the vertical axes. And just drag that into position there. Now, of course, we want this all to line up. So what I can do is left click, hold shift, left click again to select these two diagonal shapes and just go to object and group. Now that those are grouped together, I can hold shift and left select left select, left click on that last rectangle as well. Make sure that my selection is aligned to selection. So what we're going to do is align these two diagonal shapes with the horizontal shape. And if I click this one here, horizontal align center, you can see that that just shuffles into place. So it's just a great way to make sure that everything is lined up centrally before you go any further. And once that's done, we can then go ahead and ungroup those two shapes. So now these are all three individual shapes. Now what I'm going to do is select all of these again, holding shift and left clicking. And then I'm going to move these out using the arrow keys. So if I hold shift and use the right arrow key. Now the reason that I like to do this rather than dragging with the mouse is I can hold shift, move this out, I can make the changes as necessary and then I can just hold shift and move it back in. So I know it's going in exactly the same place that it started. So what we're going to do is start rounding off these corners. So I can select each rectangle. You likely will need a CC version of Illustrator to have this feature. So with that shape selected, you can see these little circles just inside from the edge and you can left click and drag to round those off. And for reference, I'm using Adobe Illustrator CC 2017. So again, we can just drag and round those off. If you don't see them for whatever reason with the main selection tool, try switching to the direct selection tool. Sometimes that helps them appear. And you can also see the corners tab at the top here and you can adjust that radius using these arrows. So we've rounded those off and we're just going to do this last one here. So just left click and drag and just drag that towards the center and it will round them all off as much as you can. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually select this one here and we're going to go edit, copy, edit, paste in place. Again, use that same technique of holding shift and using the right arrow key. And we're going to make a few changes to this one. So if we select this again, and select the direct selection tool and we're just going to set that corner radius all the way back to zero. Now what we're going to do is select the shape and rather than rounding off all four of these corners like the others, we're going to simply left click on this top left corner and just round off just that one. And you can see that red line indicates that it's rounded off as much as it can be. And then we can left click hold shift and left click on these two bottom ones. So these aren't the outside anchor points. These are those little circles just inside from the edge. And we'll pull those together. And that's all using the direct selection tool as well. 
So now we've kind of created this part of the shape here. We're just going to adjust the length, make it a bit shorter. So let's zoom in for this one. And with the direct selection tool, I'm just going to drag over this entire top end just to make sure that I capture both of these anchor points here. And we're going to left click on one of them and drag and it will move that whole part of the shape. Now we need to take care that we don't do this. So just go as close as you can to the lines and then let go. So we want to keep that angle the same. And once we've done that, what we can actually do is just select the original shape that was here and hit delete or backspace. And using that technique of holding shift and now using the left arrow key, we can nudge that back into position. So it's a little bit close there. So I'm just going to go and undo those last couple of steps and maybe shorten this just a little bit more. And that's using the direct selection tool. And then I can select the shape with the main selection tool, hold shift and use that left arrow key to nudge that back in place. And then what I can do is again, use that direct selection tool, hold shift, left click again. So I'm just selecting each of these individual anchor points and I can lengthen it that way. And for something like this, it's always better to go a little bit shorter and then lengthen it because if it's too long and it overlaps this shape, it can get quite tricky trying to make that selection with another shape. So it's, in my opinion, better to go shorter because then you can easily make that selection and just lengthen it that way. Okay, so uh, that's pretty accurate. Although I have made one mistake in that I've lost that top part up here. But what I can do is I can actually, now this shape is in position, I can go edit, cut, and it will cut that and copy it to the clipboard at the same time. And I can use the undo command here, that's command or control Z, and I can just keep going back until I get back to this shape here. And then what I can do is with the direct selection tool, drag over those bottom anchor points and drag these all the way up. Again, making sure that everything stays in line. And I can just pull this one in. And because all of this is the same color, this uh, icon, it doesn't matter that the path's all wibbly wobbly. We're going to sort that out in a moment. But remember that we did cut that shape to the clipboard and we can go edit and paste in place. And there we go. So my mistake for removing this part, but that's another way of doing it, is you can cut shapes uh, which removes them and copies them to the clipboard, go back however many steps you need to, and then paste them back further in the process. Okay, so we've got that one done. We've got a couple more to do now. So with these shapes, when you round off the corners by left-clicking and dragging, um, it's a really quick and easy way to round off corners. Sometimes if you try and use the Shape Builder tool or some of the Pathfinder tools, you might get some issues when combining shapes. Now, if you do get any issues, one way that I like to get around this is once the radius is, radius is, radii, whatever you call it, once your corners are looking good and you're happy with them, just select each shape individually and simply select Unite. That's the top left option from the Pathfinder panel. And if you don't have that, you can find it up here under Window. And by selecting Unite, you'll see those little dots disappear. And you can still adjust the radius, but I find that by doing that, sometimes it stops any issues from happening. So if you don't have any issues, great. If you do, that's just a workaround that has worked for me in the past. Okay, so we've created that curve here. We've got a couple more to do. These curves look a little bit more bespoke, a bit different. And so we're going to use the pen tool for these. So again, you can see those smart guides are really helpful in making sure that I select the path and I can left click with the pen tool. Go down here, you'll see it lines up with the bottom and then just left click and drag out that curve. And don't worry if you don't get the curve perfect first time because we can adjust everything anyway. And then just left click on the anchor point. It wants to continue that curve. We don't really want that. So we can just left click on that anchor point. 
And what we're going to do, in fact, it doesn't really matter because we just need to draw a shape, something like this. Now it doesn't matter what this part of the shape looks like here. The important thing is the curve. So I'm just gonna change the color of this so you can see how the shape looks. And we can left click on this red shape we've created and then select the horizontal black shape by holding shift as well and left click. So those are both selected. The red shape is on top of the black shape and from the Pathfinder panel, we can select minus front. You can also use the Shape Builder tool, of course, if you're familiar with this, but if you're on an older version of Illustrator, you will still have access to these Pathfinder options. So minus front, and it will knock out that red shape from the horizontal black shape. And if you go into outline mode, that's Command or Control Y. It doesn't matter about, uh, oh, maybe not change the, uh, the angle there, but it doesn't matter how this looks because it's all still the same color and we will be merging all of these different pieces together in the end anyway. So the important thing is just this curve. And you can see here, if it's not quite as smooth as you'd like, you can use the direct selection tool to select the anchor point and you can adjust the curve as much as you like. So I think I might just adjust that just a little bit but you still get full creative control in that regard. In fact, if you want to smooth it out even more, you can select this shape and then select the smooth tool located under the shaper or pencil tool and just left click and drag. And it will just smooth that out a little bit. So lots of different ways, but it just depends what works for you. So you can see I'm zooming in and I get complete control over all of these anchor points and their handles. Right, we've got one more to do now. So because I've got the original JPEG ripped from the internet over here, I can see this angle. And what I could even do is just draw this angle with the pen tool and just drag this over here and either use this shape or just have it as a handy reference. But I'm just gonna freestyle this with the pen tool and just draw that curve, something like this. And again, just click that anchor point if you don't want to continue that curve. And we're going to go up this way. It's this part of the shape that is removed. And again, just for reference, I'm going to select red. So you can see the shape that I've created and the curve here, this is the important bit. So what I'm going to do now is left click on the red, hold shift, left click on the diagonal black vertical shape as well. And with both of those selected from the Pathfinder panel, select minus front. And you'll see it knocks that shape out, creates that gap, and you can go in and adjust the anchor points with the direct selection tool. So we're getting pretty close now. It's looking pretty good. We've still got lots of different pieces. If you go into outline mode, you can see all the different pieces and we need to tidy this up. Remember outline mode is command or control Y. And the easiest way we can do this is, well, there's two ways really. We can select everything and with the shape builder tool, we can go la di da di da, just left clicking and dragging all of those pieces nice and tidy. But if you are on an older version of Illustrator, don't worry, you can just drag over everything and use the Pathfinder panel to unite all of these shapes together. So two different ways of creating the same effect. It depends on your preference and what version of Illustrator you're using. And then you can go and fine tune all of these gaps if you want to spend a little bit longer finessing your design. But we now have this as one shape and if it's worked correctly, you will see you have a color over here. So it will not be a question mark, it will be a color. So we have black in this instance. And I'm just going to hold shift and shuffle that to the right. Now we're going to go and create the rectangle itself. Rectangle? It's a, it's a square, Dan. It's a square, come on. Okay, so let's select the rectangle tool and we'll left click and hold shift to draw a square. And the square is black and we can again use that direct selection tool to select these little circles inside the edges and just round off those corners quickly and easily. So we get that nice radius there 
And if you want to round this up, so let's go for 67, just round it up to the nearest pixel, you can access that from the corners menu here along the top. And I'm going to again use the shift shuffle technique. <laughs> Is that a thing? That's the thing. Right, we're going to call this the shift shuffle technique. Hold shift and use your left arrow key to nudge that out of place. And it will make sense in a moment because we will nudge it all back together and it will be amazing. So what we're going to do is we have the image from the internet here so we can pull those gradients straight from that. Normally you'd create your own colors, but we're going to use the eyedropper tool and we're going to go to the very bottom here to sample the darker blue. So it graduates from a darker blue to a lighter blue. And we'll just sample this. And if you'd like to use this color specifically, just copy and paste this six digit reference here into the color picker. But with this as the main fill color, from the swatches panel, we can go and add a new swatch from the bottom right corner, select global and click OK. And we can do the same with the top, so we'll sample that lighter blue color with the eyedropper tool. And here's that six digit reference, if you'd like to copy and paste that and use the same colors as this tutorial. And we can then go and add this as a global color swatch. So we have these two blues added here. Now, once we have those two swatches created, we can select our square that is not a rectangle. And from the gradient panel on the right, we can click anywhere on the gradient slider and it will add that default black to white gradient and we can change the angle as well. So at the moment it's set at naught degrees or zero degrees and we can change that to 90 and it now runs from top to bottom and we can just flip that with this option here that will reverse the gradient so we've got the darker color at the bottom and the lighter color at the top now this is the easy part all we need to do is double click on that black swatch and just pick our darker blue double click on the white swatch and pick our lighter blue and we have that gradient that matches the app store icon and in fact, we've pretty much done everything. So we can actually remove this App Store icon and just select the square, hold shift, and we use the shift shuffle technique. Hold shift and use that right arrow key to nudge this back into the middle. And we can select the icon itself and hold shift and use the left arrow key. And you'll see it's gone behind, but we can simply go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front, and it will be in front. And if you do want to make sure that everything lines up perfectly, I think it's a little bit off center at the moment, just drag over everything, make sure Align to Selection is selected, and you can then align this both horizontally and vertically. And we can go and give this the color white. And if you do want to knock out this white shape from the blue square, you can see at the moment, this is how it looks with a background behind. So I'm just adding this in for you to see. But if you do have the white icon on top of the blue shape, you can left click on both of those holding shift. And from the Pathfinder panel, select minus front and it will knock out the icon from the blue shape, allowing the background to show through. So it depends if you want to see the background behind or whether you would like the icon to be white and there we go that's how to create the new ios 11 app store icon in adobe illustrator so i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial i think with something like this it's not necessarily about recreating this icon unless you really want to but it's more about the tips and techniques for how to go about creating shapes and combining them if you want to create your own icons or logos in illustrator yourself so i really hope you enjoyed it please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below like this video if you enjoyed it take care and i'll see you next time